Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I am looking at Stargan 2 ADA once again. Why? Because this time I'm focusing on running it locally with one of the new NVIDIA RTX 3000 series cards. So if you've got an NVIDIA 3070, 3080 or 3090 then this one is for you and it is basically focusing all around Docker. You have to run everything in Docker because the new NVIDIA cards need CUDA 11 and the existing Anaconda and PIP implementations for TensorFlow, certainly for TensorFlow 1, don't actually support the new cards because they're all CUDA 10. So we have to use Docker to get all the GPU acceleration. Now I did cover this briefly in my previous video and I'll go over this again now. And there are also lots and lots of extra things I discovered once I got the card that I also had to do that I couldn't find out last time. So let's start with installing the drivers. There are a couple of ways to do this. There's that URL there, and there's this URL here as well. I prefer the first one because it's a lot quicker. So this one just gives you all the drivers there, and you want the latest short-lived branch version. Uh, obviously, the links are down in the description. Or this one, you can do a little search, and you can say, OK, download type, then it's short-lived, start search, and you get a little spinny thing. Maybe you like spinny things. Eventually, it comes back, and then you can click on colors to get the download exactly the same thing so yeah both links down in the description and up to you which one you pick it is exactly the same either way next you need to have docker so apt install docker i had it installed already and you will also need the nvidia container runtime as well this basically lets your gpu talk to the docker image all the installation instructions are here so it's very easy on ubuntu i just had to add the repository as detailed in the instructions there it's just a little link and then sudo apt get install nvidia container runtime awesome there's also a little bit of docker engine setup there so uh, doing the system d drop in um, the final thing for docker is just being able to run it as a non-root user i don't like having to type sudo every time and having all the permissions changing no that's just too weird so I found that my group had already been added. I didn't have to group add Docker. All I had to do was the user mod command there to add myself to the Docker group and no more having to run sudo every time. Awesome. So let's dive into these. The very first thing you will need to do, of course, is Docker build. Now that will create your Docker image file with all the stuff that you need to run Stargan. Once you've done that, you can run Docker images. And Docker images, once I take that off read only, will show you all your Docker images. So as you see here, I've got the TensorFlow there, 2011 TF1, and the Stargan 2 ADA, according to that tag there. So Stargan 2 ADA latest, and there is the image ID for that. Now the Docker file, I changed ever so slightly just to use 2011 rather than 2010. Uh, a new container comes out about every month. So if you want to use a new one, go ahead. I like using the new ones awesome stuff. So you can also have another uh, couple of other commands as well for Docker that you might be interested in. So Docker RMI, if you want to delete a Docker image, and there's also Docker PS, which will show you information about the Docker containers which you have running. Okay, so if we pop back in here, it gives you this one uh, example Docker command there, which I also ran in the previous video, uh, which generates some images for you. And I tested that last time and it worked brilliantly. However, running it uh, for realsies, um, I also found out that there are some extra commands to run as well. So running that, uh, TensorFlow was warning me this, you, you need to do this as well. So that I have also added to all of the commands. Now, creating the data sets as it's got down here, running the data set tool. So there's the normal data set tool. Uh, command so just Python dataset tool create from image, images now that sort of uh, caused a little bit of an issue first time because it's hang on this docker image actually needs to be able to see this directory here uh, that has all my images in so there's also a mount that you can do there type bind source so I mount my images there under the target slash data so then when I run the command dataset tool I create from images I do the data set there, which is still the local host there, but slash data is that mount point. So it's equivalent to that command. So as you can see, the Docker command itself becomes a little bit large. So I've split it up onto multiple lines there, as you can tell with the little slashes at the end. Uh, but that's all one line there. So yeah, quite a big Docker command. 
to run uh, the data set creation, but that will create the data sets for you. Okay, great. So training on Docker, exactly the same thing. So there's the, the sort of normal Python command that you'd run, Python train, and then your outdoor and your GPUs and all that sort of stuff. And here it is again with Docker. So again, we've got this entire thing at the beginning. So with the shared memory size and the U limit and the mem lock and the U limit stack GPUs, and you're removing it afterwards. You're setting your directory locally so you can run all these little commands, and then you can add the Python. So essentially, you're adding all of that there to the beginning of your command. So there's the Python train command, and there's of course there's an extra little bracket and some quotes on the end. Now, some other little things I found while I was testing this, uh, and this seems to be the case for other people as well, um, when using the augmentation pipeline and Blit or Geom are included, then the ticks are very, very slow and just get slower and slower and slower. So the very first time I tested this, um, I was looking at a seconds per K image of, uh, I think it started at about 300 then went up to 400, then went up to like 800. It was just getting slower and slower and slower until it was like slower than the 1070. Uh, I mean, my 1070 did 30 minute ticks and this was taking 45 minutes to do a tick. So um, something slightly weird there, not entirely sure what it is. Um, and if anyone does know, that would be fantastic. Could be something to do with Docker and the way we're doing these scratch directories. Absolutely no idea at this point, but uh, other augmentations do work, so color, filter, and noise um, all appear okay. Uh, another thing I found as well is the augmentations can leak out um, as if they're actually part of your data set. So, for example, I started seeing images that were generated with rotations or color changes that just weren't in the original data set and that shouldn't be. Um, so, yes, there's some strangeness going on there. Um, I also made some other changes to maximize GPU usage. So, Here's my, my default configuration, so just a mini batch size of 32 and the map equals 8, so very similar to the, the Stargan 2 one in there. Uh, but what I did change lower down uh, is the mini batch GPU. So I found 32 was good for 256 by 256, uh, 16 for images 512 by 512, and 8 for 1024 by 1024. Now down here we've got some examples of ticks, so here we can see 256 by 256. And uh, as mentioned previously, my 1070 was roughly about half an hour per tick. And uh, now on the 3090, we're looking at about three to four minutes per tick. Seconds per K image there, 45. Doubling the resolution makes it a little bit slower. So we're about 80 seconds uh, there per K image. So there we go. I think that's all the updates related to Stargen 2 ADA, Docker, and the new NVIDIA 3070, 3080, and 3090. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, that's it for now, Rodent out.